Jan Fester was born into an Orthodox Jewish family in Poland. He was just 17 when Germany invaded the country. During the German Aktions, Chen was separated from his family. He survived eight slave labour and concentration camps. In extracts from his recorded interview, Chen gives an overview of his wartime experience, beginning with the main Akiton in Sosnowice in 1942. Round about 1942, March or April, the German put out a notice that all Jews have got to assemble in town. And there were about 20 or 1,000 Jews who were assembled. And we were standing there day and night for about three days. We were surrounded by about 1,000 or 2,000 uh, SS soldiers with machine guns. And eventually they came to some selection. And uh, they sent many thousands away. My mother was taken away, she was sent off. And a lot of homes were broken. There's, there wasn't a house where anybody wasn't missing. Little children were running around in town, looking, shouting, where's my mother, where's my father? When I was uh, picked up from the clothing factory to send me away, I was sent to a place called Marktstadt. First time I've seen camps, and it was a frightening experience. Then I was sent to a place called Klettendorf. This was a work camp. Once I have been taken away to the camps, absorbed by myself, never didn't know what happened to the rest of the family, nothing at all. They started to teach me to be a bricklayer, then to lay uh, railway lines. And from there I was sent to Falbrick, terrible, terrible place. It was terrible because they woke us up around about three in the morning. We had to stand outside. The weather wasn't, could be raining or pouring or anything. We were standing for about an hour outside on the uh, roll call area. By the time we got where we should work, was a, where we were about 8 o'clock. We work all, work all day. By the time you go to bed, about 10 or 11 o'clock, and 3 o'clock you had to wake up. So it was, was murder. They liquidated that camp, sent us to Camp Gradis. I think we must have been around about 1,500 or 2,000 men, inmates, in that camp. Camp was experiencing typhus. The whole camp was closed up. I got typhus as well. I was lying there, I don't know how long, many days must have been lying there. So I was completely knocked out. All of a sudden, I started waking up, trying to sit up, and the whole world was going, going around. Look at my hands, it was like a skeleton. I could count every bone in my body, every bone in my body. I thought, I'll go down to the wash barracks to clean myself up. I could see pallets in the wash barracks with bodies, six one way, six the other way, lying out of about 2,000, 1,500 men, only 300 to survive. They liquidated the come, and the ones who survived, the three or 400 survived, were sent to a place called Annaberg. I was there another two or three months, and from there I was taken to Auschwitz. So we arrived in Auschwitz about 12 o'clock at night, middle of the night. It was really frightening that. Suddenly you could see the blocks after blocks one another and electric wires with lamps every 20 meters, and it's completely quiet. Nothing moved. A carbolic smell as well in the air. And you could see from a distance, you could see four chimneys with flames, and they, the SS shouted with the dozer. And we were taken to, uh, to the showers. We were in rest, we had a wash. After that, we were taken out, being tattooed. Didn't realize that the other lot, instead of the water, poison were pumped in through it. We were taken to a block for a quarantine. After about three or four weeks, they uh, put on a notice they want some engineers. So I volunteered, I picked out of about three or four hundred of, the, of us, and eventually we arrived to a place called Nieder Orschel factory, and we assembled the wings of the Juncker planes, airplanes. And the, the SS 
There were elderly people, Austrian people, they were about 70, 75. Eventually, around about towards the end of March, the Allies were coming quite near. Eventually, they liquidated this camp. We were marching towards Buchenwald. After a two-week death march, during which 75% of the original party died, Cherm reached Buchenwald. Very soon after his arrival, American forces liberated the camp. Lists of survivors were circulated around the camps, and Cherm was found by his sister Manya, the only other surviving member of his immediate family. At the end of his interview, Cherm spoke of how difficult it was to come to terms with the suffering he endured during the Holocaust. Obviously, it must have had some impact on my way of life, without any doubt. To give you an instance, you, I couldn't talk about it for about... I couldn't talk about it for about uh, many, many years. And, and I tried to forget about it. When I started off as a sewing machine mechanic myself, I remember I was working day and night, seven days a week, to try to forget. But gradually you, you start to speak about it, but whether it has affected my life or anybody who's had experience of what we did, it must have changed their life. It's, it's, you find as you get older, it becomes more difficult. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War visit www.war-experience.org.